In the future, short term, we're going to need more people to set up mobile stages, to be out there running power, setting up sound. And so what is the best and most effective way to do that? One is obviously putting it out there that you're hiring. But what happens when you find a qualified person? Well, Fish is going to talk to you about all that type of stuff. So give him a big round of applause. He's, I think he lost like uh, at least eight pounds since he's been walking back and forth here. If you were here in 2020, he's probably like 125 pounds heavier. So we want to get him down another hundred. So uh, take it over, Fish. Hey, welcome to the conference. Hello, everybody. One of the hardest challenges we face, uh, we're doing a job. The client says they want uh, to do a big, giant build out. 50 foot by 50 foot, 24 foot all around the stage. So you have a pretty much a tractor trailer worth of decks, almost 300 decks. How do you train somebody for that? Well, it's hard to train people to become, you know, weightlifters, but it's easy to, 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 to train someone to be a, a lead guy. Many times we've hired people, and it's, I'm sure this happened to all of us, many times we've hired people that we had to go outside and get a labor force. You know, these are trained stagehands. These are, these are trained stagehands. You want me to talk that loud? It's not that too loud? Oh, all right, no problem. So anyway, uh, we hired these stagehands. We're bringing in about 30 of them. And we break them up into groups of six. And we leave one lead guy. Next thing you know, you are four hours behind schedule. So how do you train somebody? Well, the first thing is one person at a time, you have to teach them to teach to teach. Did that make sense? You have to teach somebody, train somebody, so he has the ability to teach and train somebody else. Thus, they start multiplying and you'll have a trained staff. If you think training is expensive, try ignorance. Truthfully, try ignorance. You know, we have to invest in ourselves so we can invest in the people who represent us. If the people who represented us are doing a great job, then the client's going to be happy. They'll call us back again, and next year, around that calendar date, we'll have another job. How do we train somebody with audio when everybody's ears are different? That's a good one, right? Everybody hears something different. Some might like more highs, some might like more lows. So the hardest thing I found about training is Every walk of life walks in, and now we have to teach them to do what we do. Uh, some of you guys might be in audio. We have to carry cases. Uh, how do you roll up a wire? How do you roll up an XLR? I start, people start using the elbow and the hand, and I start laughing. It's in, out, reverse, in, out, reverse. And I can throw a 50-foot XLR, and it'll open up completely. But you go to a job, and some new jack rolled up all the cables and put them into the box, and now you go to use them, you waste another half hour. Our business is time. The more time it makes, the more time you use, the less money you make, the more effort you use. So training's important. Right now, everybody wants to work. They stay home, they play PlayStation, and they get a check. So a lot of the people in industry it, they make more money staying home. So that's one thing. Anybody have any questions on how do you train somebody? Do you have a curriculum that they're going to follow? Do you have something that's uh, uh, already written out and they're planned? Because if you don't, you ain't training nobody nothing. If you don't write down what you do methodically, step one, step two, step three, then nobody else is going to know how to follow the curriculum. No one else that you hire will learn how to train the next person. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. You must write down what it is the job is. The job is to take this chair and move it here. If it's not written down, no one's going to move it. Hey, move the chair. Okay. Where? You didn't tell them? You didn't direct them? They're not going to do it. Most of us lost our ESP in many, many years ago. It's true. You have to delegate it and tell them what you want to get done. Uh, I find it easy. Mike has a great way of training people. Throw them to the wolves. Just put them out there with everybody else. They'll figure it out. It works. Sometimes. I asked some guy one time. I was in Nashville, Tennessee, setting up a stage for Chevrolet. And I asked the stagehand, I said, take this pin, 
and put it in this hole. I gave him eight pins. This pin is red. There's a red piece of marker above the hole. Just put pin in hole. During breakdown, I didn't see him for his pay, nor did I see the pins in their place. You see, you, you, you have to train them. If you don't take the time to train somebody, so if they're better than you, you know what that means? You're being represented properly. If you demean or abuse the people you're trying to hire, it's just abusing yourself because you can't communicate. You, that company is you. That trainee is a representation of you for your company. So if you ever slander or misuse or abuse somebody on a site, you just abuse your own company. I find it easy to train. I bring people in. First thing I do is I get a stage deck. All right, tabletop that. What? Hey, very nice to meet you. We'll, we'll call you. End of story. If they're not a little knowledgeable of what they do or they don't have passion about the event industry or getting rained on or snowed on or bitten by zillions of mosquitoes and all kinds of bugs that I didn't even know looked like a walking piece of wood that was on my arm, it's not for them. We're in the outdoor event industry, and the safer we are, the less our insurance will be. Because when you start getting written up, for the, I think it's 27 years we have no injuries. You know, maybe a couple of band-aids, but no, like, nobody's head cut. However, I saw a guy jump off the stage. I have three rules around the stage. Rule one, never walk backwards. There's too many things that could change too fast. Lighting guy, video guy, audio guy, putting stuff behind you that wasn't there a second ago, that's there now. Catwalk, turn your head sideways a little bit and look. I saw a guy fall off the stage and I think his knee came through his thigh. Okay. Never jump off the stage. Never jump off a stage. Good training technique. Because if they jump off the stage and they're not true athletes, they, they may hurt something. And I, I don't want to get into graphics, but he got hurt pretty bad. He went out in a stretcher and a thing on his face. Safety is real important. So the purpose of trainings is to keep our company insurance policies down and not hurt somebody. No one wants to hurt no one. You know, you're looking at the client and the client's looking down and one of the stagehands and his bone is sticking through his knee. It's, it's not nice, you know, the, the client, we're, we're the fun people. We're supposed to have fun. Any, do I have some questions on how you guys train? All right. What's next, Mike? Marketing? What was the third? Come again? That must be Tom. Just never walk backwards. Never jump off the stage. What's number three? Oh, what's number three? Who could tell me what number three is? What is it? What's number three? If something doesn't look right, ask. If something doesn't look right, ask. If you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't look right, ask. I say that at the pre-meeting before we set up any stage. And everybody looks at me like I'm wacky, but they don't realize that, that Mike and I went through the trenches. 11 years ago, we had a, we had a, we, we, we say, we gotta sell stages. How do we sell stages? Uh, let's go to LDI. Oh, it's like almost 30 grand, too expensive. We gotta do something by ourselves. We gotta do something to get all the people united. You realize we have stage line, apex, Century, Stage Mobile, Great Lake Stages, and Astra, all different manufacturers eating breakfast in the same room, communicating, answering your questions, and helping you with anything you may ask them. And if you give them an idea, they'll, they'll work to, to better serve our stage needs. You know, Century's got these little tiny hooks. If you look over to the stage, it's like a little hook. So when they put their lights on there, they hang their wires in the hook. Great idea. We gotta get that one. All right, so marketing, what is marketing? Does anybody own any real estate? A house, a home, something? Okay, how much was real estate 22 years ago in the same place? One tenth? Well, the internet is exactly like, let's make believe this floor is the internet. And every couch is information about your company on the internet. The more couches you have, the more internet you have, the more rankings you have, the more calls you get. Am I making sense or losing you? It's kind of like, is your glass half full, half empty, or full? Well, if you count the air, it's full, no matter what you put in there. The internet's the same way. 
Google wants the most relevant information, the newest information, and it has to be the most information. And if you can put those three things together, you will rise in the rankings. Does anybody have a cell phone? Okay, this side, I want you to Google Rent Mobile Stage USA. This side, I want you to Google Rent Mobile Stage Nationwide. And in the back, I want you to Google Rent Mobile Stage California. Don't tell me about the ads. The first organic listing when it comes up. Okay. Okay, so uh, there's two types of listings on Google. One is an ad, and it usually says in the top left-hand corner of your search that came up, it says ad. And then the organic one is the one that says number one. So anybody find anything? What? Mobile stage one. What listing did you have? That's uh, Rent Mobile Stage USA. USA. So if somebody types in Rent Mobile Stage USA, telling the search engines USA, I come up number one. You did it? Anybody else? California, Rent Mobile Stage California. Thank you. So my point is, you want to be number one on Google? You have to tell me what regions you want to cover. Because I don't own any mobile stages. I don't. I own all you guys. What's more valuable, the customer or the gear? Honestly, what's more valuable? Without the customer, the gear has no purpose. Come again? I can't hear over here. Park in your yard. Yeah, making a payment. So my goal is to give out as much work as I can to everybody else. And I carry insurance, I write the contracts, I have a pretty good track record, uh, I make sure the client and the person I'm putting on the job, I know who they are. That's what makes the Mobile Stage Conference great. You guys get to meet a face of who owns the gear. If I know if I need a big video wall in Florida, I'm calling Jesse, OPAV. I know, that's who I'm calling. You want a big video wall? You want to get the right number? You call that guy. If I want a really good light show and a big sound company, I'll call Jason. I'll call Corey from Hot House Productions. That guy's a machine. He's a monster. You want video walls? You want audio? You want lights? He did up all these stages. So marketing, you get my point a listing, what it is you want to sell. Now, if you want to tell me, I want a website and it, I'm going to sell mortgages and I want you to make me number one, you better have three, 400,000. This is a mom and pop conference. This is not a big conference. It's a mom and pop. If you want to do it a little bit, get your website, you want me to review it, do a search on it, happy. A footprint, the more real estate you occupy on the internet with your name, the higher your rankings will be. Very simple. But if you're selling stages or renting a stage, then don't put your name in a listing in a car company because it's incongruent. So there's things you gain points for and there's things you lose for points for. If you're renting stages, lighting, audio, AV, they all work together. But take the one keyword that's the least saturated. When I say saturated, if it's too saturated, I can't make you great in all five or all four. I'll make you great in one, and then you build the other ones up behind it. Marketing is real easy. There's a cycle. There's an inquiry. There's a contract. Fill the order. Deliver the order. Execute. Get the check. If you're here for any other reason to get the check, then you don't have to listen to me. Because I'm here for two things. Get the check, have fun along the way. That's it. We were out here in the rain yesterday and the day before. I heard a couple of moans, but you know what? It's this is the outdoor event world. This is what happens. So would any, does anybody not have a website? Okay. How, does anybody have a new website less than a year or two years old? Okay, so those two websites require what's called seasoning. Google, Yahoo, Bing, and Baodao from China, and I do use them. 
those monster search engines take time to to bring you up onto the page. Like if you're in your hometown and you type mo rent mobile stage and you don't come up number one in your backyard, you definitely got to come and see me. The one nice thing I realized about the internet, it, it, I can make a sugar packet famous. And everything you read on the internet and Google is not true. It's only true because enough people said it was true. Your company, your website is not going to make you money, but it's going to give you credibility when you get a client like I have, North Face. Big client. They give me big work every year. I'm working with them now for seven years, except for last year, COVID, we didn't do it. To get clients like that, your website has to look credible. And you have to give them enough information. And the way we built, or I designed and my team and engineers do it, everything is from the moment you see the page, bringing you to a call of action. Whether it's going to be a hello phone call or a quick quote form. Does anybody ha not have a quick quote form on their website? All right, how many people have quick quote form on their website? How many people have arms that work? <laughs> all right, so the bottom line is uh, you could spend $100 a day, you could spend $1,000 a day, you could spend 10000 a day. That's not going to make you number one. Pictures is very valuable to me in, in building. Every picture you took is truly worth the thousand words. Not to get too techy, the front of a picture is binary code, which is a bunch of zeros and ones that delegate to another computer where to put the pixels of color or text so you can read something. The behind the picture, which humans don't see, but the computer see, is metadata. Metadata is, is another language that can be manipulated in a way that benefits your company. Like if you put up a picture of Facebook, you just ruined a good picture. You're not going to get any credibility for it. It's not going to do anything for you. But if you put metadata on that picture and pass it through your website first, the, the bots know that that picture and that property belongs to you. Because when you put up your picture in Facebook, they just take your property. So I've been doing this for uh, every winter. I only work with two customers a year. Sometimes I get super duper results. Sometimes I don't get super duper results. The more pictures you have, the more results I can get you. Because I can say, we were at the Bahia sitting in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at the Mobile Stage Conference, across the street from Fort Lauderdale Beach. Fort Lauderdale Beach, big buzzword. Bahia Mar, big buzzword. The Mobile Stage Conference, big buzzword. Our company, small buzzword, but it knows big buzzwords. The association putting it, if you have somebody of talent on the stage, we have a big artist on the stage. Where the location is, the type of stage it is, who's on the stage. Don't put the date. And then we'll, I'll put every zip code in a uh, hundred mile radius around that stage. So when somebody calls up either the artist, the stage, or the location, the Google box has somewhat of a reference. The mobile stage industry, even though it's a nationwide industry, is a niche market. It's a small market. So it's easy to get your rankings in your backyard. Hiring, now maybe I warmed these up a little bit. How do you hire somebody? Hey, how you doing? If you guy gotta be pretty physically fit. Say hello. Hey, do you like event work? And then give him a road case to lift. Or give him a road case with the wheels locked and tell him to get it over there. If he doesn't have the intelligence to figure out how to unlock the wheel, then you're not gonna hire him. You, 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 can't, you can't make people do things, but if you train them, you can show them how to do a few things they know to do it better. You can't beat somebody to be a, nobody wants to be a stagehand. Other people want to be a stagehand. It's very glorified. I know stagehands that make a ton of money. They tour with Peter Frampton just two years ago, just before COVID. They were running around the country. He goes, it was great. We were on buses, we were in hotels. They gave us the best food. You know, it, 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 we, we usually do a big party where we want to hire people and bring a whole bunch of people into the party and have great food, great sodas, drinks, everything's great. Okay, guys, we'll see you tomorrow for training. And then tomorrow's like, this is work. <laughs> they don't like that. But last night we were partying, we're doing this, we're doing that. The best way, 
uh, I started a school in uh, Seattle, Washington uh, two years ago. And it was every Wednesday night. I would stay late in the warehouse and I would put ads in, well, uh, in multiple places, uh, Craigslist, uh, Facebook. Uh, I would reach out to different schools and ask schools if they had a, a sound curriculum or a music curriculum or a staging and they were sending me people there. I had A1, true A1 audio engineers that were doing like A-list acts uh, would come in once a Wednesday. I would give them 100 bucks. I would buy food, sandwiches, and sodas. Uh, the first day, we had like 12 people. By the second week, I had over 50 people every Wednesday coming to the shop. I recruited AV guys, audio guys, staging guys. This is how we put together a deck. When somebody says tabletop that, that's what this is. When you, they tell you to lock it in with the alloc, that's what this is. So we actually had a school, and if you have 50 people, young people coming from school, they're excited. They want to be a part of the cool stuff. We're the coolest people on the planet. I don't care what anybody says. If somebody says you're not cool, you're hanging out next to super A-list acts and, and not asking him for an autograph and not asking him for a picture, just being you. Sammy Hagar came in. We were leveling decks for his 50th birthday in San Diego. 300 decks, the tractor trailer and a half of decks. He goes, how's it going, guys? It's going cool. He goes, you need a hand? Nah, we're good. All right, see you tomorrow. Had no idea who he was. <laughs> I didn't even know who he was. He was just a regular guy. And you know what? That's a great feeling in this industry, when you meet cool people and they're cool. I know a lot of not cool people, and they don't have to be in the industry. But if you can think one day a week, you start a school, you call the local high schools, the local colleges, Hey, we're doing a little training here on audio consoles. It was audio consoles, how to hook up a pair of speakers. Not 10, a pair. How to hook up a mini console. How to work an M52. How to work the big giant Digico. How do you work this 96 channel? Once a week during like October, like towards the winter months, when it's a little slower, you open up your shop and you start a little school. And you do a training. You bring a couple of A1s. You put out three different audio consoles, maybe the same brand if you're fortunate enough to have that many, a couple of little speakers on tops, and then as, as the class will progress, you add a bigger system. And then you, you do things like I do. Like you, you just pull the power out of the console just enough that it looks like it's plugged in, but it's not. And that's what I would do. And, and what happens with on a job? Huh, we don't have a console, now what? You know what? You went through the training. You showed them power first. Without power, nothing works. Except the mobile stages down at the end. They don't need anything. Mobile stages don't need power. They don't have to get plugged in at all. So if you don't have a power, so power. Okay. Signal source. Oh, where's the signal coming from? Oh, it's coming from this microphone going somewhere over there and then coming back over there and then going out the speakers. You start a little class. That's the best way to train. The same way that I was training and helping people redo their websites and get higher rankings. You don't need higher rankings. If you're too busy, then you don't have to talk to me. But if you want to get too busy, then you have to talk to me. School. School is important, no matter what. We started off with training and a back of training. One day a week is not going to hurt anybody. You put out some sodas, some pop, some waters. One, one week you do dominoes, one week you do sandwiches, one week you do homemade cold cuts. One week you do ZD. With, with hiring some staff members, if you don't have any of your own, it's a $200 investment. You want to find talent? That's how I find talent. I'm not looking to put out no classified ads. I'm going to put them through training first. Then, after the training, I'm going to throw them to the wood, into the woods doing a little bit more training, but paid. I want to give them some money. And then say, hey, you know what? You made the cut. You're in. You know, they feel like they accomplished something. They didn't just say, okay, you're hired. All right, anybody have some questions? I, if I don't have no questions, I don't have nothing else to say. I have a lot to say, but you, you're not going to sit here. Give me some questions. Come on, what do you got? What a crowd. <laughs> I think we have to give something away, maybe to wake them up a little bit. All right, so we have, we have some cool prizes. Some of them were too big. Uh, a lot of people flew in. So on the bigger ones like that, we're going to take your name and stuff. And like uh, RCF is going to be mailing it, shipping it to your house. 
Uh, if you're down here, then it'll be easier. If you're far away, they're going to still ship it. Uh, I think that's what I have to say because uh, nobody's asking me any questions, and that means you know everything, and I know everything. Oh, I got a question. Cool. I'm back. Okay. I have a big problem with this. And uh, what are the three steps to hiring somebody? By starting a little class in a school, you're going to see people come and go. And your job is when that wheel is turning, I like this one. He's presentable. He's presentable. There's this guy, Corey. Love him to death. He's, he's a school teacher in one of the colleges in Washington State. He, he teaches audio. So there's three types of audio engineers in my world. An A1 that does everything. He knows how to troubleshoot. He knows how to jump stuff. He knows how to rig stuff up. He knows how to fix a microphone. An A1 is supposed to know everything. Then there's an A2. An A1 runs the front of the house what the spectators hear. An A2 runs the side of the house what the performers on stage hear. And an A3 is a patch monkey. That's what we call them. And, and the key is, how do you do step one, two, and three? School, training, and then look for talent. There's talent everywhere around us. Okay, you brought a guy in for a stage, or do stage decks, but the guy's great on a lighting board. Hey, you're the new LD, come here. Just like that. You'd be surprised, there's a lot of talented kids out there. These kids, they're a whiz in the computer. I mean, in school, I, never, I didn't have an abacus. I mean, uh, a calculator, we had abacus. There weren't a lot, calculators weren't invented yet. You know, they didn't, they didn't come out. They had the big one like this, and yeah. All right, we got some here, some cool stuff from Ch Stage Line. Are you gonna do uh, a bingo for this? So what's a fish giveaway? Just walk up and hand this to somebody? All right. All right, we're giving away uh, a Canadian Army knife from Stage Line. It's a, it's a, it's a Swiss forged in China. No, it's, a, <laughs> it's actually a really cool knife. It's actually very heavy. So these are two separate giveaways. Okay, I got a gift card and a Leatherman. Who do I give it to? The fish way. The fish way. All right, everybody take out a dollar bill. Everybody take out a dollar. Who knows how to play poker on a dollar? You don't have to give me the dollar. Just call out what you got on your dollar. Who, play, who knows how to play dollar poker? Dollar, dollar, don't make me holler. It's only a dollar. Come on, come on, let's go. Who got, what do you got? Three of a kind. Who's next? Come on, look at your dollar. It's pretty cool. There's a hundred dollar set here, and you get you got a gift card with the Hard Rock. Let me see what it is. Whoa! And a hundred dollar gift, hundred and fifty dollar gift card, and a room at the Hard Rock, and a Leatherman to stab everybody when they take your money. All right, what do we got? We got a pair of deuces. What do you got? Three of a kind. What kind? Deuces? Eights. Eights. Three eights. Who can beat three eights? Stop. The $100 bill doesn't make it more valuable. That's all you got. All right, borrow somebody else's, turn it upside down and split it. What do you got? No, no. You, you, you had three eights or three aces? Did he say aces or eights? Eights. That's why people got shot at poker with the aces and eights. Anybody else? All right, you guys, you checked all your ones, you couldn't find a, what do you got? You got a straight? What do you call it out? Let, bring it up here, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, let me see. Two, three, four, five, straight. Whose dollar is this? Mike. He can't win it. Come on, no, it's for me. Oh, you can win it, all right. All right, who's, come on, what else? Give me something else. Full house? All right, I'm on my way back there.
you bring the full house over here? Because I'm kind of like full in this house to walk there. Huh? 